hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Dale Chanel's 40th world child let's just go on and get into this Tamara Hall show that featured Portia Williams on it I think it was about a couple of days ago child Tamara was laughing at Portia in front of her face she was laughing behind her hand she just could not take Portia serious she said this is a easy peasy type of interview and I'm just gonna make let Portia make a big ass fool out of herself. I'm just going to ask her simple questions. And she's going to pretty much say it with her facial expressions. Ta Tamara was asking her, why aren't you getting married? Or when are you getting married, baby? And Portia said, they courting, honey. She said, they courting. <laughs> and she, Portia loved to say, oh, we're from the South. I, I, I'm... The South do it this way. And Tamara just shut her up, honey. She just said, Portia, I'm from the South, too. And we don't um, we do not do things like that. We, we Buying a house before we get married? No, we, we don't do things such as that. She was checking Portia without Portia even seeing that she was going to get checked. Okay? I was like, Lord, have mercy. Tamara reminds me so much of Kenya Moore. It's, 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 ooh, it's just... <laughs> I can't even find a word. But what does come to my mind is train wreck. Okay, train wreck city. Portia set up there on this syndicated show. Or well, probably will be syndicated later on. Uh, after Tamara has a few more good years. Cha Portia told Tamara she was dating Simon. And Tamara like, wait a minute, hold up, you're, you're engaged, what do you mean you're dating? She said, you and your husband don't date. Uh, and Tamara said, no, because we married. <laughs> I'm like, yes, honey. I said, Cordell put you in therapy, honey. Cordell, your first husband, put you in therapy. Dennis, your second engagement to be married, but you wouldn't sign a prenup agreement, put you in therapy. And God dog it, boy, it's over with. Simon's going to have your ass in therapy. But at least these two men came. Simon probably won't even show up for the assignment. Remember when you said you were in love with Dennis? On the Real Housewives of Atlanta playing it as a storyline. Now you're back showing us you're in love with Papa Smurf over there looking like. Hell, Peter Thomas looked better than him. And looked at fabulous in some suits and stuff when you dress Peter up to the nines. But Portia, everybody, oh, I, the whole interview was a train wreck, okay? And then you're going to put yourself in the category with all those other women with R. Kelly and his little indecent proposals he's making to these young ladies. And they were definitely teenagers, Portia. You weren't a teenager, baby. You was a solid young adult. And they were held against their will to a certain degree, meaning mind control. You were basically up, up, up in that camp. Free will, no holes barred, no one's holding you there hostage. You sat there those many hours, as, as you said, you had sat there. That was your choice. You wasn't being withheld. You could have came and uh, went as you pleased. But that's something in your head. You're chasing that money, Portia. And that's what's going to get you continuously in trouble. And you're saying you've grown. Nobody has seen your growth. Baby girl, you need to pray for discernment. And if you get anything out of my video or any other YouTuber's video that's not trying to bash you. But trying to make you understand that what you're doing, what you're saying is not living in your truth. Girl. You have no wedding date, but yet you said you closed on a house, you and Simon. How ridiculous does that sound? That's almost saying PJ has a half uh, stepdad, but yet he really ain't her stepdad because y'all not married. Do you really think Dennis is going to put up with that mess that you're trying to throw down our throats? All this go get the milk for free. You don't have to marry me type of scenario are you kidding me 
Are you kidding me, girl? Where is Diane? Diane need to be whooped up the crack of her behind for having you and having you look all kinds of crazy out in these streets, girl. Girl, I mean, Portia went into some of everything, and I'm like, why? I'm asking the same thing, cat. Cat, why would she do these horrific things? Okay, they make no sense. It's like you haven't learned. You haven't figured anything out, Portia. And you really need to go to therapy and be in constant prayer. Get off these reality TV shows because they are not doing you justice. That money you are chasing is going to lead you down the rabbit hole. And you're not going to be able to come back to tell a story of tales. You got that Jezebel spirit on you, girl. You need to pray for discernment. All right. You couldn't even settle down with this young man who cheated on you. Why you were pregnant? Having y'all's baby. Okay. But you were saying you were going to the line. You was going to ride with this joker. He was your man. You weren't giving up on him. Y'all going to learn together. And yeah, I'm looking at her like she crazy too, Prince. You six feet on the probably 12 feet on the by this side. Because <laughs> you've been gone a while. And stuff do sink on the ground. But yeah, we, we're, we're flabbergasted. We are dumbfounded. We are totally bewildered at what Portia got us looking at her. She got a new show. It's full of shit. It's, full of, it's just a crock pot of mess. It ain't even like where you're really entertaining. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know she's going to get this. I know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, Lord. This is something that can happen in everybody's family. And we know it's going to be the cops or it's going to be somebody going to the graveyard. And what foolishness are you, hoodoo spirits, are you trying to conjure up here, Portia? You're supposed to say you're a Christian. We don't do stuff like that. What are you doing? You messing with the mystical type of stuff now? I, I should pass on a Riri. I should. And can you, I mean... We knew her storyline was fake. Or some of us knew. Others believed that it was true. And they wanted it to be true. But Kenya didn't. Uh, you know she cried a little here and there. But she wouldn't let nobody take nothing from her. Not her baby. Not her house. Not her uh, stint of trying to be back on this show. She wasn't quitting it no more. She knew where her bread was being buttered. And she's going to ride it out until they say, Kenya, we don't want you no more, baby. But thank you for participating in our shows, okay? And send her off, you know, in a very, very nice way. But, child, Portia, Portia, Portia. I'm like, girl, you the epitome of what they used to call a dumb blonde. You know, got all the body pow, the facial features pow wow, and got a, 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 a ounce of brain cells up there. And I mean, Cordell treated you just as such. Dennis gave you some leeway, okay? Because I think he really did like you. Okay, and he thought he could see something with you, but he just wasn't really ready, ready to settle down. But this is a body guy. That man been kicked out of a country allegedly from doing some illegal type activities, and you want to set yourself up and your baby girl PJ, who's very, very, very innocent in all of this. And again. I'm fighting your mama in my head. I really am. I'm tearing her up from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I'm tearing her up because there ain't nowhere in the world I would allow my daughter that I brought in this world with all that pain I had to go through. That she's going to disrespect herself or me out on a platform just to make some money. No, you go to school, you get an education, and you do something that's respectable. You don't sit up here and show yourself as a prima donna hoe. Going around here acting like the highest bid prostitute there is. And then you want to be treated with all the laps of luxury. And somebody just looking at you. That's supposed to be your security. Your protector. Your provider. Look what you look what happened with you and Cordell. Look what happened to you and Dennis. And do you not think the same hand is going to be dealt to you with Simon? Okay. Same hand is going to be dealt, Portia. And it's not going to be in your favor. And you see how miserable and, and, and uninterested you're looking right there? It's going to be worse than that. Keep fooling around with this industry. <coughs> Keep fooling around 
with chasing that money and see what's actually going to happen to you, girl. Whoo, y'all pray for Portia. Pray for Portia. Pray for her to have some type of discernment over her life because she's got that pretty baby girl. And we don't want nothing to happen to that baby girl fooling with that man and the comings and goings. Because he always liked to go jet off to Costa Rica. I mean, what the hell is in Costa Rica that abides your time other than your rented house? Because I know you ain't paid for it. I know you ain't paid for it, Simon. Rent it. Whatever. Because there's so many other islands you can go to in the U.S. Well, hell, out the country if you wanted to. Why fly to Costa Rica? This is like going to Florida, you know, every six months or every four months. Child, go get you a yacht somewhere. Go sail the, the Mediterranean. Then you're doing something, saying something. But here and there, we're hearing you jetting off to Costa Rica. Girl, it seems like a drug deal going bad. Okay, or a drug deal happening over there. But anyway, that's just my opinion. But just some highlights to what um, she was talking about on the show with um, Tamara. She was saying that she had uh, wanted to commit suicide around the ages of about 15. She couldn't even really get it together. Now, most people that had contemplated or had been in a situation where they wanted to commit suicide or they want to engage in that type of behavior, whether it was playing games with other kids or whatever, they just want to feel some type of euphoria or some kind. They were getting off on that adrenaline that was pumping, doing that type of a stunt. Of stopping their breathing or whatnot. We would know what age we were. Okay. Just like you would know what age. If someone took advantage of you. And you ended up getting raped. Or to some degree. You know where you was at that particular time. What was happening surrounding those events. And you do know how old you could have been at the time. Okay. But Portia like she don't know. She don't know. She was saying that. You know she was trying to tell her story. And I'm like. Out of all these times, that could have been a good storyline on Real Housewives of Atlanta. If you really wanted to make an impact and use your platform for something viable, okay, to help someone. You could have been told about it. You didn't even have to mention R. Kelly's name. But you intended to do that because you knew it was a salacious story and people would gravitate to buying your book. Because after watching your show, ain't no way in the hell good, decent, uh, solid thinking people would go out there and buy that trash of a book. Okay? Because we know it's all got, you know, maybe some truth in it and it's a lot of lies. I'm like, your parents should have got you therapy. Did you not tell them or eventually tell them what you were going through or you just went through with all the baggage from your childhood up into your young adulthood up into where we are now 40 damn years old and you trying to break some bread to us on what you went through well let me give you an update miss portia people have been in worse situations and have come out on the top where they didn't have to go to the entertainment business and and, and um torture their soul or sell their soul to get some money no they did it the normal way they educated themselves or they were just entrepreneurs and had a good instinct about what they wanted to do and how they could uh encapsulate it to becoming something bigger and better and probably sell their idea to a top of uh 100 fortune uh company and they'll be making millions if not billions. Or just, you know, being able to take care of themselves and be entrepreneurs and take care of their livelihood and the upkeep of the business and their livelihood in a sense. Uh they don't necessarily have to be millionaires, but they are meeting they're making ends meet and you know, and it's having stuff left over. You see what I'm saying? But you chose this. That's why I don't understand why you keep thinking you're a victim. You chose to be in that situation of trying to commit suicide. Whether you were suffering from depression or whatever. Because you kind of take some type of accountability. It can't be like you always the victim, victim, victim. Just like you found yourself over in R. Kelly's home. Way, way, way from Atlanta, Georgia. How did you get there? Who told you 
he could help you what plans were y'all formulating see this is like premeditated portion it ain't like so like somebody kidnapped you dragged you there against your will held you against your will and you had to do ungodly things no in your mind you felt this is what i need to do to be in to in order to be where i want to be i mean we always knew about the casting couch and the tales that were being told. And some people tried to make it feel seem like it wasn't actually that. While others were like knocking on the outside or hollering from the inside saying, yes, it is exactly like that. And you have to vow yourself to secrecy or you won't get any parts of the industry. Whether it's film you're trying to go to, acting, or in the uh, music industry in any facet. You're going to have to do the tricks of the trade to get where you want to be someday. That's all it is. It's a wicked system. Why people gravitate to this is where I'm going to make my money. This is where I'm going to make my big mark in society where people will know me from generations to generations. This is what I'm going to do. So that's where you found your self portion. You got to take accountability. You can't be up here sitting saying, you know, this somebody did this to me or this person did that to me like you had no willingness in there to continue to participate in the actions or say you're not going to do it and you're going to choose another way of living and excelling through this life that we're living in so it was just horrible to watch horrible to listen to you try to present an answer that people would believe and Tamara was basically laughing at you in your face like you are one stupid chick okay but we know or anybody that have a half of a brain will see you're chasing that money you're chasing that unfulfilling dream of this is what you have to do this is what you have to look like in order to be accepted in society and you're still playing that role you are still playing that dumb role um but like i said she you know she talked about the suicide at a young age and i'm like where was your parents where was your mother you always saying she was this wonderful person if she was so wonderful and she was there for you your dad and your mom why could you go why could you not go to them okay why could you not go to them you chose not to okay point period and blank um let me see. Then she talked about, you know, the R. Kelly situation, which we don't really want to hear about it. And then she went on to say that she mentioned him, but it was a other, couple of other people that she could have mentioned, but she just left them out the book. I'm like, hell, you should have did the same thing to R. Kelly. R. Kelly already had his mess entangled. <laughs> his fate was already set. We didn't need you to just regurgitate more stuff and just to put yourself in there. Because technically, you make yourself look stupid. Okay? Even a judge would look at you and say, baby, these people were held against their will. They were being manipulated. But from what you're saying, you were just playing into the industry. Long-standing type of antics you got to do to be a part of their world no one held you against your will it was just like are you going to do this or are you going to do that are you going to be with us or are you going to be over there you would have free will these girls did not technically have free will because they weren't acting on their best knowledge of understanding things because they were teenagers okay teenagers meaning not young adults Meaning not an adult making stupid decisions. They were teenagers. They were kids still. Their brain cells were still formulating on how to handle a certain situation. Okay? But anyway, Portia. Mm, mm, mm. But that woman sat up there and said, her, her and um, Simon was courting, child. They were courting, courting, courting. And you and Tamara was like, wait a minute, you engaged, but y'all haven't set a date. It ain't like y'all just newly, you know, found y'all selves young, dumb, and trying to have some fun, like in your early 20s. You know what I'm saying? Or even your latter 20s. Got to be some time when you hit 30 and you start waking up and saying, okay. But Portia is willing to have no wedding, no set date of when she will be marrying this man. She's just living her life. She's just courting. You know, I'm like, girl, 
you are just like the end of the world has come <laughs> and we just trying to see what's the best fit place to put you and your antics because you can't even lie straight i mean it made no sense you know what i'm saying your mama sitting up here looking at her daughter go up in flames and she ain't trying to say or do anything but the Bible speaks of that too. The Bible speaks of the mother and daughter would turn against each other. The son and dad would turn against each other. It's uh, it's just Bible fulfilling. I tell you the prophecy. Mm 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 mm. But uh, I'm like you were messing with a journalist, meaning Tamara Hall. That knew how to put you in a situation and knew you were going to be too dumb enough to figure you were being led to the slaughter, honey. She was leading you to the slaughter, girl. And you did not even know. Girl, this is not like your confessions time over at the Real Housewives of Atlanta. When y'all be sitting there talking to um, some people that are interviewing you on a certain scene that you just partake of and wanted to know your backside story did you have anything else to comment on i mean they were looking confused i'm sure the interviewers were looking at you totally confused when they were asking you them questions when you were on the real housewives of atlanta taping okay but now tamara uh tamara tamron i'm sorry she's a true journalist she knows how to pick your buttons she knows how to get to the meat and potatoes without you actually knowing where she's going and she couldn't get me <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll be like, pump your brakes, baby. We're not answering that question, okay? And I'll be ready to say it out loud and in color, all right? But, Portia, you could tell you out, you were out your league, baby. That's your league. Just know you're going to be cheated on because that's the only thing you feel you deserve is a no good person. And you have to take the brunt of everything because I don't know. This is just your mindset. And if you're not willing to go get help, how can you be a spokesperson for other people when you're still just as damaged as they are? You're saying you healed and you were able to talk about your experience, but you're not talking about it. You're more so reacting to what you say it happened to you instead of dealing with what happened to you and growing from that and learning how to conduct yourself in another way. But you're still doing the same thing. Over and over again, okay, and and coming up with the same bad results. So how can you say you've learned when you're still committing these acts, okay? These negative acts. Oh Lord! Then she goes in to try to to mirror. I mean, Tamron goes in to ask her. You know, a lot of people out there. I, you know, she wasn't really saying. She was saying. She just listened to what the streets were saying, like we be saying on our YouTube channels. This is what the, the media saying. This is what the streets, the YouTube streets are uh, uh, regurgitating out there. She said, Portia, did you break the friend code? <laughs> did you break the girl's code by going too far, crossing the line over dating a so-called friend's husband and then trying to take him? I mean, she put it in a nice little box, wrapped up real pretty, and served it up to Portia. And Portia was like, what? You know, acting all stupid. Like, we weren't friends. We, we, we I, I just pretty much it's stuttering and all that kind of stuff. She was just trying to, try to explain to us the familiarities of what goes on behind the scenes that we're not privy since we're viewers of the show or what is relayed in the back end of things you only get what the the, the show edits you to see not the back side story what we really see which is the truth i'm like Portia, sit your ass down where you would sit down i want to get your ass up from that chair and walk off <laughs> just walk off the set and say you're done okay because that's pretty much is the show is pretty much done and the, and the book is pretty much done. Because nobody in their right mind is going to support something. I mean, even if they bought it and read a few passages, it'll probably sit on their shelf. And I'm like, po' babe, po' babe. You know, you're going to get that type of aesthetic from people. That type of response from people. They're not going to take you serious. Damn, they ain't took you serious in 40 years. I don't think they're going to take you serious when you hit 60s and 70s. Because this is what you want people to believe you are. Okay, you don't even know who you are. Okay, you can't even have a decent conversation with some logic and reasoning behind it. 
when you're expressing yourself it's just like well this was done to me so i'm gonna do this or this is what i expect and i know if i uh want this i have to do this <laughs> i'm like no that was the whole me too movement no you're supposed to come in with what you were god given your talents you don't need to be undressing sexing up no man or female for a role or a part in a play or a musical or you know being a rapper or a doo-wop girl or just being the main artist showcasing their vocal abilities no your talent should speak that's you know did you not understand the me too movement either Borgia? so it was just a sad sad events okay that i keep having to have to find myself looking at and you know it disturbs me when black women or women in general sit up here and want to use their body to proceed on what the world or the elites of the world have indoctrinated that this is what you have to do being a woman <laughs> you got to keep your mouth closed play dumb and just show your body and that's pretty much how it has always been since the beginning of time okay even with the feminist movement we tried to shake heads and trees and, and men, you know, uh, minds to joggle something in their brain that we're not sex objects. We're not sex tools. We're not sex toys for your, your, your pleasure. We do have brains. We do communicate real well. We can build and achieve things. We can run things, you know, but that's just me. Okay, that's just me. Okay, I digress, okay, because I get, get, I get mad when I know women that are pretty like Portia, keep their body nice, you know, and, and pay a lot to their aesthetics on the outside, but I'm like, beauty phase, and then you could be in a, a huge, major car accident and wipe all that beauty away, you know, anything can happen to the outside beauty, but what, what do you have to offer for us the inside beauty? What do you have to offer as far as a conversation? Okay, what can we relate on certain different levels and then come back in some commonality that brings us together as one, one mind, one thinking? You know, what you know, do you have any of that going on for your portion? I, I'm just we're just trying to find out, baby. Or it's just the glitter, glittering women. That uh, is it just the glitter and I don't forgot what I was gonna say. I, it wasn't like everything glitter ain't gold, but it's just like a person that wants to be seen in the best possible light, and they have no flaws. Anybody have a word for that? And that's how they want to be seen throughout their whole lifespan. Y'all think about it. Drop it down in my comments. But um, that's a lack of a good word. You just want to be seen on the outside and judged for that and, and only that portion. When it's so much more to you. I know it has to be so much more to you. My gosh. You had two parents. Did either one of them have any morals. Any ethical stances. That they felt that they weren't going to compromise for the dollar. Girl let us some know. Because I was rooting for you. I was rooting for your spin off. But girl when I saw that first episode. I was like Lord have mercy. The child on went to hell. The child on went to hell in a handbasket with this crazy show that we got going on. I said, I thought a Real Housewives of Atlanta showcased it, black women, for triflingness. But your, your show, Portia. Ooh, child. Mm mm, mm mm, mm mm. But y'all, that's all I had of this particular video. You like it, love it, gotta help more. Don't hesitate but to subscribe to the channel, share my videos, share my videos, y'all, and like them as well. I would truly appreciate it, and it's free. It costs you nothing. And definitely will try to watch my videos from beginning to end, because you might get a chuckle here and there. You really might get that little chuckle laugh. And um, I don't know. To me, that's a cute couple. I mean, when you get into marriage, you're going to face that sometimes weird situation where somebody's gonna cheat you know some people may not have ever experienced it or maybe the parties just kept their mouth closed and they're gonna take it to their grave and only them and the lord knows about it and that's what i like i you know I'm, i can respect that that's some good stuff right there but technically if you gotta cheat you don't need to be together 
Meaning there shouldn't have been no engagement. There shouldn't have been no proposal. Y'all should have stayed friends. But when you get to that point in your life and you feel like you want this person and only this person. Damn, that's what you need to stick to. Whether they get fat. Whether they uh, lose their aesthetics of beauty on the outside. Whatever is going on. You're supposed to love them no matter what. You're supposed to be there for them no matter what. That's just how I see it. That's how I always see it. Okay? Because to me, that's true love. But that's all I have for this video, guys. And I will see y'all on the next video. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.